Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the first module of software engineering uh, PCS501. So in this uh, module we have three topics and eight uh, models. Okay. So three topics are there in the software engineering part. In the process models we will be seeing eight models very important uh, from the exam point of view. And uh, if you watch this video till the end you can easily score more than 80% marks in the exam. And uh, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. So the first is what is software? Uh, the nature of software is the world is always changing. Okay, and uh, so the software also must change uh, so that it will be still relevant. And what is software? It is a set of instructions, data structures, and features that can be used to execute and obtain results. <coughs> Software application can be divided into seven domains. So all the software uh, in, uh, systems which are present in the world, they can be divided into seven categories. The first is the system software. What it does is it means is the collection of programs written to service other programs. So to facilitate the working of other programs, the program is written. Next is application software. These are the standalone program that solve some specific business need. Next is the engineering or scientific so software designed for the scientific uh, research purposes. Embedded software is the one which resides within the product or the system and it's used to implement the control features and functions. So it is uh, within the uh, device. That kind of software is called embedded software. Then product line software. So designed to provide a specific capability for use by many different customers. For different customers, you'll be designing a product that is called as product line software. Next, we have web application used for the web design and the artificial intelligence software. It's software which uh, is uh, designed to work with AI. What is the nature of web apps? There, there is a unique nature of web apps. Okay, so what is the unique, unique nature? Network intensiveness. Okay, so it will be having diverse community of clients. It should work properly. It should have concurrency, means all the number of users may access the web at the same time. It should not stop it. And uh, unpredictable load can be there. The number of users will be varying. Performance should be good. Availability should be there all the time. And data driven, it should be handling the data. And content sensitive, the quality and aesthetic nature of the web app is an important characteristic. Continuous evolution should keep on updating itself. Immediacy, after the uh, launch has happened in the market, it should be available to the users. Security should be there and aesthetic is also very important. <clears throat> Next we have the software process. Before that some keywords are there. Okay, what is process? It is a collection of activities, actions and tasks that are performed when some work or product is to be created. Okay. What is activity? Activity is a uh, strive to achieve an objective. Whatever uh, an objective is there, if it's trying, uh, trying to achieve it, it's called activity. Action is that which encompasses a set of tasks. Task is nothing but it focuses on a small but well-defined objective. Okay. And what is the process framework? It establishes a foundation for a complete software engineering process by identifying small number of framework activities. So some activities will be there and all these activities will be for development of the software uh, product and all this comprises of the process framework. Okay, so this is called as a process framework. A generic process framework for software engineering will include five activities and umbrella activities. So what are the five activities? Communication should happen first whenever a design for the new uh, project comes. Communication should be there between the uh, developer and the client. Planning should be there, how it should be planned, like what all things are required and all. The model should be made here. The construction should happen of that uh, project and then the deployment should happen. And umbrella activities means in all of these five phases, the activities which are to be performed is software pro uh, project tracking and control. Risk management should be there. Software quality assurance should be there. Technical reviews, measurement and software configuration management, reusability management, work, product and preparation and production. Okay. So these are the activities which will be always performed in any of the phases and there will be five main phases. Communication, planning, modeling, construction and deployment. Moving on, we have the general principles of software process. So whenever a software process is designed, the principles are seven principles which we have to keep in mind. First is the uh, software which you are de uh, designing, it should provide value to it, the users. Second is, is keep it simple, stupid. Means the, uh, the product should be very simple to understand and maintain and develop. Maintain the vision, the vision, what is the, was the goal that should be maintained. Whatever you produce, others will consume. The whatever uh, software you are producing, it's not for uh, keeping in a box and keeping inside the cupboard. But others will be consuming it and using it daily. So we'll have to make it in such a, a way that it will be easy for others to use. Be open to the future. When changes come, you have to make the changes. Plan ahead uh, to reuse. Whatever can be reused, you have to reuse. Think twice and uh, uh, before taking any action. Okay, you have to think twice. Two times you have to think before taking any action. Don't do anything in a hurry. That will cause uh, losses in the end.
Okay, going to the second half of the module, which is process model. We, are, we have eight model. The first one is the generic process model. So generic model defines five activities. First, communication. Then planning will happen. Modeling will happen. Construction and deployment. So there are few types of it. Okay, if it is a linear one, first communication, planning, modeling, construction, and deployment. So this is the end. And if it is in a iterative uh, flow, what will happen? Communication will happen. Planning will happen. If there is some other thing needs to be communicated, it can go back here. Like that, from the modeling, it will it can go back here. From the construction, it can, it can go back to the communication. So it will be iterating um, as many times as it's required, and then only it will be have, having the end here. That is iterative. Evolutionary will be having the first communication, then planning, then modeling, then construction, and deployment. So increment will be released. Again, the same thing will be happening. That is called as evolutionary process flow. Okay. And this is the parallel process flow. This is happening. Communication plan, uh, planning is happening at the same time. Construction and deployment will also happen. Okay. So this is called as a parallel process flow. And sometimes we come across some errors or uh, something. So if you try to solve those errors, we'll be knowing the solution. And many such similar uh, problems we face. So all of these, if we observe carefully, we'll see some pattern. That pattern is recorded and kept, okay, documented. So that is called as process pattern. So that whenever a new issue comes, you can use the pattern to solve the new issue as well. So example of the process pattern, like the pattern name first will be written, requirements unclear. That is a pattern name. Uh, this is a problem, which is a uh, requirements are unclear. The pattern discussion approach for building a model prototype that can be accessed iteratively by stakeholders in an effort to identify and solidify the software requirements. To uh, get the clear idea of what are the software requirements, this uh, pattern is for. This is type is space pattern and the following conditions are given. Uh, what is the context? And the problem is also given. What is the solution? And the resulting context is also given. And related patterns can be customer communication, iterative design development. So these are all the related works. So, so they will be having a similar solution as well. And known use an example. Prototyping is recommended when requirements are uncertain. So whenever the requirement is uncertain, we have to use the prototyping. So if a new problem comes and it's similar to this one, we can use this solution. Okay. So that's why we use uh, patterns. Okay. Uh, pattern problem. Next, we have process assessment and improvement. So, whenever we design a software process, is it good or not? That check will be done by few standards. Okay. So, so the first one is a standard CMMI assessment method for process improvement. Okay. CAMPI. Next, we have CMM based appraised for appraisal for uh, internal process improvement. Okay. CBA IPI. Then we have SPICE and then we have ISO 9001 2000 for software. Okay. Next, we have the prescriptive process model. The first one was generic. This is prescriptive. Why it is called prescriptive? Because it prescribes a set of process. Okay, it prescribes a set of process. That's why it's called prescriptive. There are two in it. The first one is the model, a waterfall, a waterfall model. In waterfall, what happens? It will be uh, one by one. Okay, first communication will be done fully. Then planning will happen fully. Then modeling, then construction, then deployment. No one will be coming back here. Okay, so in this case, the requirements must be very clear. Okay, because we cannot come back here once the uh, one phase is com uh, completed. That is called as waterfall model. In incremental process model, even if any change comes, it will be taken in the second iteration, in the third iteration, fourth iteration, it will be taken. But this is still a single, uh, singular flow. Any change uh, happens here, it cannot be done uh, back in this way. It will be done in the next iteration. Okay, so this is called as incremental process model, and this is used where the requirements are uh, constantly changing that time. Okay, the fourth model is the evolutionary process model. Evolutionary model are iterative. They are characterized in a manner that develop increasingly more complete versions of the software. Okay, so the first type is the prototyping in the evolutionary. In prototyping, we will be developing a prototype. What are the requirements are there, and then we will do the quick plan and model the quick design, construction of the prototype, and deployment delivery and feedback. Okay, this will be keep on repeating until the product is made. Next is spiral model. In spiral model, we will be starting from here. Okay, and we will be doing the communication, then planning, then modeling, then construction, then deployment. Again, in the next phase, we will be doing the same thing here, and next phase again we'll be doing until the product is made and without any issues, we'll be uh, following the same uh, set of principles again and again. Okay. Next, we have the fifth model, the concurrent model. Concurrent model defines a set of events that will trigger transition. So here, transition will be there, an event will be there, and it will traverse from one state to other state. That is called as concurrent model. Currently, what is happening based on that? Okay, it is uh, based on the uh, time period. So first, it is inactive, then it will be under development, then it will go away changes, and it will be gone to the under revision, under review, baseline, and done. Okay, or under development, it can uh, directly be done if the requirements are very clear. Then it will await for the changes and again the same thing will happen and it will keep on happening. Okay, so this type of model is called as the concurrent model. Okay, moving on, what are the li uh, limitations of the evolutionary model? So evolutionary model is very good. 
but they, they have the limitations. Prototyping is a problem due to unknown number of cycles. We do not know how many cycles are required, so the prototyping is unknown. Evolutionary process does not establish maximum speed. It should be how much fast, how much slow, it is not established. Software process focus on flexibility and extensibility rather than high quality. Okay, that is more important. Flexibility and Moving on to sixth model, we have the specialized process model. Specialized process is for the specific purpose. Okay, very uh, <clears throat> narrow niche that for type of problem we are solving that is specialized process model. First is the component based development. Okay, so here we will be developing a component and using in the software. So component will be developed and the whole software process the component will be integrated. What are the steps performed here? Available component based products are researched, evaluated for the application uh, domain in the question. Component integration issues are considered if there is any issue in the integration. A software architecture is designed to accommodate the components. Components are integrated into the architecture and comprehensive testing is conducted to ensure proper functionality. So once this uh, uh, integrated inside this, testing will be performed to ensure that the functionality is fine. Okay. It leads to software reusability. Okay. Means you are using the component based, it will be uh, helpful in software reusability. Second is the formal method model. Here we will be using the mathematical specification to design the model. And aspect oriented, we will be using the aspects such as mechanisms beyond the subroutines and inheritance for localizing the expression of cross cutting concern. Okay, like some aspects of the product will be taken into consideration and then we will be designing the product. Okay, that's called as software process for aspect oriented uh, development. Next, we have the unified process. What does unified process mean? Un unified means together, right? Unified process is an attempt to draw on the best features and characteristics of traditional software. In traditional software, what were the best characteristics that will be taken and process models, uh, but characterizes them in a way that implements many of the best principles of agile development. Agile means uh, always changing. So it takes the best features of the traditional model. It characterizes it in a way that is uh, bound to change always. So this type of model is called as unified process model. Okay, so there are five phases in the unified process. It's similar only, all the models are same only, there is no much difference. Communication will happen, then planning, modeling, construction, and deployment. One thing you can observe here is the inception. Inception means communication and planning will happen at the same phase, then planning and modeling will be together happen as elaboration, and then construction will be happen in both transition and uh, and development. And after that, the release will happen here. Each release, the new changes will be present. This is called as software increment, and the uh, final phase is called as the production phase. Okay. Seventh model is the uh, personal process model. In personal process model, the emphasis is given on the person who is developing the product for the measurement of both the work product that is uh, provided and the resultant quality of the work product. So what is the work product and the quality of the work product and focus is given on the person who is developing the product. So the person will be defining, doing the planning, high level design will be done and the review will happen, development will happen and the post-mortem means the analysis like how well is the product. These things will be done by the person who is developing. So this is this type of development is called as personal process model. If this is done in a team, it is called as team software process model. It focuses on the team to organize itself to produce high quality software. So TSP defines the following fundamental uh, framework activities. Project will be launched, high level design will be done, implementation will happen, it will be integrated and then tested thoroughly. Okay. So these are the eight models, very important questions from exam point of view. And if you found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.